In 2023, the Denver Nuggets, after 47 long and grueling NBA seasons, finally got to raise the Larry O'Brien Trophy and hoist up their very first championship banner into the rafters. In 2024, the Nuggets lost their most crucial player off the bench, Bruce Brown, eventually losing to the Timberwolves in seven games in the second round. Going into the 2025 NBA season, the Denver Nuggets once again aren't projected to make it out of the West, that being the Thunder, and they lost their starting shooting guard, who was their best perimeter defender and a major three-point shooter, and in exchange for this, they got a washed up Russell Westbrook. So what's happening with the Denver Nuggets? A team just over a year ago that completely ran through the NBA playoffs is taking their roster in the complete wrong direction. Let's talk about it. The Denver Nuggets in 2023 completely cruised through the NBA Finals. They beat the Minnesota Timberwolves in five games in the first round. In their most challenging series, they beat the Phoenix Suns in six games. Then they swept the Lakers in four games in the Conference Finals. And they finished off their run with a gentleman sweep against the eight-seeded Miami Heat, capping off by many NBA fans. One of the most boring playoff runs from a champion in recent memory. Well, it was really boring because of how good the 2023 Denver Nuggets were. The Nuggets in the 2023 playoffs finished with a combined record of 16 and 4. While this might not seem historically impressive looking at it at face value, when you compare it to NBA champions of the past, it looks a lot more impressive. The Nuggets in 2023 had a postseason record of 16 and 4. Looking back at the last five NBA champions besides the Celtics this year, none of them can break 80%. The 2020 Lakers and 2018 Warriors come close, but they're not quite there. If we expand this to champions of this century, the amount of teams that would break an 80% win rate in the playoffs are the 2024 Celtics, 2017 Warriors, and 2001 Lakers. Those are teams you hear in the greatest teams of all time discussion. In the 2023 playoffs, Nikola Jokic was a completely different animal. Throughout the 20 NBA playoff games Jokic played in 2023, the man averaged 30 points, 13.5 rebounds, 9.5 assists. 1.1 steals and 1.0 blocks and this production in the postseason is so rare to see when looking at the combined points rebounds assists steals and blocks from a finals mvp during their entire playoff run a combined number of 35 and less is typically what we'd consider a lower tier finals mvp think andre Iguodala, chauncey billups or paul pierce of course, great players, but we've seen better. From 35 to 45 total box score stats combined is where we find the mid-tier level finals MVPs. Think of players like Duncan in 2005, Kobe in 2010, or KD in 2018. Great players, but not the cream of the crop quite yet. From 45 to 55 is where we really start to see the greatest finals MVPs in league history. These are guys like Kawhi in 2019, LeBron from the past three election years, Giannis in 2021, or Shaq in 2000. But there's still one more player that dwarfs the rest. Yeah, that's our friend Nikola Jokic in 2023. He had a combined points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks number of 55.1, doubling three of the playoff productions of 2015 Andre Iguodala, 2014 Kawhi Leonard, and 2004 Chauncey Billups. The 2023 Denver Nuggets were really good, and I don't think anyone's quite Questioning that. The thing that makes the 2023 Nuggets so good compared to the 2024 Nuggets and the version of the Nuggets we have today was the depth they had during that championship run. In 2023, Bruce Brown was such a key component for Denver, averaging 12 points, 4 boards, 2 assists, a steal, and a half a block a game coming off the bench while shooting 51%. Brown played north of 25 minutes a game during the postseason, so this guy was a huge part of the rotation. With a main rotation of Jamal Murray, KCP, Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon, and Jokic, with Bruce Brown coming off the bench, and having Christian Brown and Jeff Green play spot minutes, the Nuggets were able to win it all. But the thing is with this main rotation of their starting five plus Bruce Brown, is that the Nuggets could afford Christian Brown and Jeff Green to be very underwhelming. With a top six that good, Christian Brown and Jeff Green were passable role players, but this all changes very quickly. During the 2023 offseason, the Denver Nuggets quite tragically lost their main bench plug. During the summer of 2023, Bruce Brown opted out of his contract with this player option and signed with the Indiana Pacers for $45 million for two years. This was the start of the collapse of the Denver Nuggets roster. Without such a competent role player coming off the bench like Bruce Brown, the Nuggets would have two options come playoff time. Either A, rely on the role players to step up in the postseason like Christian Brown, Justin Holiday, Reggie Jackson, or Peyton Watson, or you have option B, 
completely rely on their starters game in and game out to get you championship number two. And what did the Nuggets do? Well, mostly the latter. I would say the Nuggets chose about 80% option B and 20% of option A relying on their other bench options. But do you know what the right answer was all along though? Neither of them. Role players like Christian Brown, Justin Holiday, Reggie Jackson, Peyton Watson just weren't ready for significant postseason minutes. While Brown, Jackson, and Watson all got additional minutes in the 2024 postseason, they proved they still weren't ready for the big moment. So this forced Mike Malone to be pretty much fully reliant on their starting five. I mean, don't get me wrong, their starting five was elite last year. But you can't win a championship without elite players and at least some depth bench. While this problem didn't really affect them against the Lakers in the first round winning in 5 games, this problem came to bite them back against the Timberwolves in the second round. What won Minnesota this series was the depth they had around their core. Naz Reed had a phenomenal playoff run last year and guys like Nikhil Alexander Walker and Kyle Anderson all outplay Denver's bench of Brown, Holiday, Jackson, and Watson. The Stars can get you three wins, but they can't win you a series against an elite team like the Timberwolves. You need everything firing. Now we find ourselves at the current time of the 2024 offseason, and it's at this point where the Denver Nuggets have started to run into financial troubles. The top four players of Denver, that being Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., and Aaron Gordon, are all really expensive to keep. All four combined are going to be making over $145 million next season alone. If the Nuggets wanted to keep KCP for at least the 2025 season, they would almost certainly have to pay the second apron luxury tax. And I'm no expert on how the luxury tax or contract structures work, but I can tell you that there's very bad consequences for the future of your team if you go to the second apron. So KCP eventually goes out and signs with the Orlando Magic, and this puts a huge dent in the Nuggets roster. KCP was arguably their best perimeter their defender, their second best three point shooter, and of course their starting shooting guard. However, it's not all bad news because the Nuggets, who were in desperate need of role players, picked up guys like Deron Holmes in the draft, who unfortunately tore his ACL, Dario Saric, who's decent front court depth, and most importantly, Russell Westbrook. As of now, this concludes the Denver Nuggets' current 2024 and 2025 roster, so let's talk about what's good and what can be improved on. Losing KCP was a major loss for Denver. During the 2023 and 2024 season, Contavious Caldwell Pope played 78 of 82 games. During the six games he missed, Nuggets had a record of 3-3. Three and three. Their first game without KCP was a blowout win against the Nets in December. The Nuggets this day started Justin Holiday at the two guard, and he didn't really have the greatest performance, shooting 1 of 6 from the field and 0 for 5 from 3 while playing 27 minutes. Game number 2 without KCP was just 2 days after the game against Brooklyn and a tight loss against the Thunder. Justin Holiday once again started this game at shooting guard and did a little bit better, scoring 6 points on 2 of 4 from the field and 2 of 3 from 3. Game 3 without KCP was February 8th in a win against the Lakers. Justin Holiday was once again starting and very quiet on offense, only scoring 2 points on 1 of 1 shooting. Game 4 without him was the day right after that, February 9th against the Kings on the road, and this was a blowout loss for Denver. Peyton Watson got the start this game, and he did okay, scoring 4 points on 2 of 4 shooting and 0 of 1 from 3. Game 5 was also against the Kings a few days later. The Nuggets once again lost to Sacramento. Reggie Jackson got the start this game and clearly showed that he wasn't afraid to be aggressive on offense, scoring 12 points on 6 of 13 shooting and 0, one, zero of 1 from 3. The best start from a KCP replacement so far. The final game that Pope missed was against the Lakers on March 2nd. Christian Brown got the start this game and he did not fail to disappoint us, scoring only 2 points on 1 of 3 shooting and 0 for 1 from 3. So after going through all 6 games, did you guys notice a common denominator between these 6 games that KCP was out? The KCP replacement never shot well from 3. When comparing the stats of the KCP replacement from the 6 games he missed, newsflash, they weren't that great. The replacement had an average stat line of 4.7 points, 2.7 rebounds, 2.8 assists, 1.2 steals, and 0.8 blocks. They shot 42% from the field and shot an abysmal 2 of 11 from 3. During 5 of the 6 games, 
None of the starting shooting guards even made a three-pointer. When comparing their stat line to KCP last season, Pope leads in a landslide in points and three-point percentage while being neck and neck in pretty much every other stat. This is a major problem. The Nuggets are in desperate need of three-point shooting. While the Nuggets in 2024 placed 10th league-wide in three-point field goal percentage, shooting just over 37%, they were also dead last in three-point attempts at 31.2 and 25th in three-point makes at 11.7 a game. Suggesting that Denver isn't really confident in taking many three-pointers, and losing their second best catch-and-shoot guy from three only makes things worse. The Denver Nuggets this season are in a very similar situation as the Milwaukee Bucks. Why do we bring up the Bucks here? Well, besides that I'm a fan of the Bucks, their starting lineup and problems are nearly identical. Both teams have an elite level point guard running their offense, coupled with their star big man. Both have their small forward who could shoot 100 shots a game if the coach would let them. Both teams at their complimentary big man playing along their star big, and both teams have a hole at their two guard. But the Bucks handled this situation way better than Denver did. The Bucks got three quality 3 and D veterans on minimum contract deals, signing Delon Wright, Tarian Prince, and Gary Trent Jr. on one year deals. All three guys who can stretch the floor and play good perimeter defense. The Nuggets need to make a move like this, getting a veteran 3 and D wing on a minimum contract. But instead, the Nuggets opted in to get Russell Westbrook, who in my opinion really doesn't solve a lot of the problems for Denver besides just pure backcourt depth. Russell Westbrook is notorious for not being able to shoot the ball, which makes Denver's floor spacing problem even worse. While Westbrook isn't a defensive liability, he's certainly declining from his prime days. And with him on the floor with Jokic, it's going to create a weird dynamic of both players trying to be the playmaker. So will Denver just play Westbrook when Jokic is out? or will they somehow force them to mesh with each other? As of now, the Nuggets roster has been declining, which is very concerning in a very stacked Western Conference, especially looking at their competitors, who have done the opposite as Denver and improved their roster. OKC upgraded from Josh Giddy to Alex Caruso, and their young core is only getting more experienced. Dallas got Klay Thompson, trying to solve their own three-point shooting issue. The Timberwolves drafted Rob Dillingham and pretty much retained their whole roster, who beat Denver last season. The Grizz the Grizzlies will be coming back with a fully available Ja Morant and a fire inside of them to reclaim the West. Don't get me wrong here, the Nuggets are still going to be in the mix with these teams to represent the West in the NBA Finals, but they need to address their issues if they want to solidify their spot in the West again.